media censorship and blacklisting has essentially already begun. I don't know if you saw this week, but earlier, Microsoft announced that it is doing this with, uh, what is it, News NewsGuard? Yeah, NewsGuard is their new program. And so what they're doing is, they're an internet browser. They have the Microsoft Edge. So you remember Internet Explorer, that kind of went by the wayside, and now they have what's known as Microsoft Edge. And if you're, most of my audience tends to be younger, they tend to be millennials. And I understand that most of us, we don't really use the Microsoft default browser. Some of us do, but a lot of us will use Google Chrome. A lot of us will use Mozilla Firefox. The vast majority of internet users, especially in the older generation, they just use whatever default browser their computer comes with, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. But that means that there are going to be an awful lot of people that are using Microsoft Edge. It is the most used internet explorer, uh, internet browser that you have. And so now what's going to happen is you have this thing called NewsGuard. And so there are certain sites that they have vetted, vetted with what they refer to as a panel of trained journalists. Sorry, I don't know why my phone can even receive phone calls right now. Um, so you have a panel of trained journalists that are on this thing and they make decisions on what sites are trustworthy and not trustworthy. And so if you're on a trustworthy news site, then you get a green check mark. If you're in a news site that is not trustworthy, you get a red shield. And so what they're doing is they're not technically making it to where you can't see the content, but they're trying to place that little bit of doubt in your mind. And if you're wondering about what the filtering process is like, they'll say that the checkmark ones, those are sites you can trust. The uh, ones with the red shield, those are the ones that are known to post information that is not correct. So let's look at the list of the ones that have the green check mark and which ones have the red shield. You know who has the green check mark? Guys like CNN, but you know who else has it? Huffington Post and Slate. Very, very left-leaning sites. And Huffington Post, most of their side is opinion. Now, I read Huffington Post. I think that it's important to get the other side's view on it. But let's not pretend that Huffington Post is an objective news site. Most of their stuff is opinion, and they don't even cite it as opinion. They'll just present it as though it's a, a hard news story, but it's really just the opinion of the people at Huffington Post, which again is fine. I think it's a good resource. I want to hear what people on the left have to say, but to try to say that they're trustworthy and that sites like Daily Wire and The Blaze are not, to say that those sites you can't trust, those get the big red shield with the exclamation point letting people know this isn't a trustworthy site. You see, this is the start of the downward spiral. We're kind of on that crisp, uh, or sorry, that, that cusp of the downward slope. If you've ever seen, uh, if you've been on a roller coaster, you know that initial hill that they go up to and you just kind of hang there a little bit before you start going down. That's where we are right now when it comes to media censorship, because you can rest assured that suit is going to be followed and it'll get to the point to where they're not just going to have a little red shield up in the corner. It's going to be where they give you a warning, warning, this site is not trustworthy. And there are going to be people that read that and misinterpret it and think, oh, well, this site has viruses or something like that and then not go to it. And what you're going to see is big tech companies following suit with this. Because if Microsoft will do it, you'll know that Facebook and Twitter and some of these other social media sites are going to do the same pretty soon. They've already been pretty notorious for censoring conservative voices already. We've already have in had incidents of this happening to me in particular as well. But see, what you're going to see happening, what you're going to see happening is that when they start following suit, they're going to start doing it in an even more sneaky way. They're going to start building a wall that you don't even see. Because you'll just kind of notice that, hey, you know, it's been a while since I've seen an article from Daily Wire. It's been a while since I've seen an article from Drudge. It's been a while since I've seen an article from The Blaze. That's what you're going to start seeing. You're going to start noticing that your newsfeed just doesn't have a whole lot of conservative news anymore. That's odd. Because it's going to be an unverified site. 
well, the, these are the sites that we believe that you should be reading because they're more trustworthy. This is how we're fighting fake news. Well, here's the problem. Fake news has been generalized far too much because back when it was started, what fake news meant was sites that intentionally put up misleading stories. In other words, stories that they just made up out of nowhere. So if they just, for example, this is a good example, actually. If you've ever eaten at Joe Mama's in Millbrook, great sto- uh, great restaurant, really good burgers. I recommend the Joe Daddy if you ever go there. So a little free plug for them. So Joe Mama's, little place in Millbrook that people know, there was a fake news site that put up a story that Bill Murray, you know, star of Ghostbusters and a lot of other movies, Groundhog Day, all that good stuff, um, and Space Jam, too. But anyway, uh, they put up a story that Bill Murray was, for whatever reason, driving through central Alabama, and he had to stop because he had a problem with his car, and they mentioned a local repair shop. I forget which one it was, but it was one very near Joe Mama's, so I think uh, maybe Gibson's over there. And so he had to stop and get his car repaired, and then he walked across the street and went to Joe Mama's, which was a really good, he said it was a really good burger. And so they presented this as though it was real news. But it had all the tells of fake news if you were really looking. But it's a fairly convincing side, and I can understand how somebody not trained in this stuff would very easily fall for that. And for a second, I fell for it. And I'm somebody that is trained in this stuff. That's what fake news used to mean. People that are intentionally just making stories up. It's a site that doesn't have any credibility. It's just made up by some random person that wants to make it look like real news, but isn't really news. Now we've taken fake news to mean news that I disagree with or news that I believe doesn't provide the proper context. And that's why I tell people, be careful when you call CNN and other sites like that fake news, because sometimes I do think they engage in things that are fake news. But that's rare. And... Uh, this story with uh, with Nathan Phillips and the Covington boys would be an example of that. But by and large, they stick to pretty fact-based stuff, even if they have a spin on it, even if they're selective in what stories they give you. That's not technically fake news in the truest sense. But now what they're trying to do to combat fake news is to basically just get rid of all the people that they disagree with. And so they're just using the moniker fake news to anybody that is presenting a side of the story that they don't think is correct. And so when they look at a story and say, there's kind of a conservative bend to this one, we don't like it. In their mind, that is fake news. And that's the problem that you're running into here. And here's the problem. They have the journalist censoring the journalist. It's sort of this idea of academic inbreeding to where they're saying, well, the journalists are writing the stories. Who gets to decide whether or not those stories are true or not? Who's to decide which story should be trusted and which sites should be trusted and which one shouldn't the journalist. Oh, so the journalists are going to tell us that the journalist is right. Okay. Well, that doesn't make any sense. That would be like a a review board for a government organization being the same people that they're reviewing. So we're going to be the ones reviewing what we gave you. And we're going to be the ones that tell you that it's good. Perfect example. We just had a bunch of award shows because it was the beginning of the year. Do you notice that at the Golden Globes and the Oscars and all these other award shows that it's a bunch of actors and actresses and directors voting on what's good and what's not, and they constantly pick movies that the American people don't like, that didn't make any money, that nobody saw? See, that's the people in the industry telling you that the things that the people in the industry put out are good. No, we promise it's good. Well, I I saw it and I didn't like it. Doesn't matter. We're telling you it's good. And so this is another example of sort of that academic inbreeding where the journalists are the ones that are telling us that the journalists can be trusted. Well, who told you the journalists can be trusted? The journalist. Well, who's going to monitor the journalist? The journalist. The journalists will tell you which journalists are good and the journalists will tell you which journalists are bad. Well, who gets a seat at the table? Well, not the ones at the bad sites because, you know, they can't be trusted. Well, then how do they have a voice? That's the thing they don't. That's the trick in all of this, is that it's a bunch of people from CNN and MSNBC telling you that CNN and MSNBC are trustworthy. Oh, well, that makes me feel better. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it all comes back to this. The people 
in their ivory towers at Microsoft and soon, I'm sure, because Facebook has dabbled in this a little bit, Twitter has dabbled in this a little bit, they're going to be the ones that tell you that you're just not smart enough to make your own decisions. You're just not smart enough to decide what news is trustworthy and which one is not. You're not smart enough on your own to decide what you should be reading and what you shouldn't be reading. And so here, we'll take the burden off of you. We'll tailor this to you so that you can just have whatever it is that you need when it comes to these news stories. We'll give you what you need to know. You don't get to decide for yourself. And that's where this is heading. And I can say this is somebody that has been censored quite a bit myself. For example, I know that uh, you remember that we had the Gillette story not too long ago. So the Gillette ad that came out that was talking about, quote unquote, toxic masculinity. I'm not going to go through the whole story again. If you want, you can go back and, and look at that story yourself. But Gillette got very mad at me because I ran their ad during my show. But I wasn't running the ad to run the ad. I wasn't showing it so that I would get more views or just, you know, putting it in a video and showing just the ad itself. I was providing political commentary, which is protected under the fair use laws. And it's protected under federal law. So I'm not violating their copyright by showing their ad to provide context to my commentary. And yet Gillette tried to get that video demonetized so that I couldn't make any money off of it. And what they did was they said, we're going to get the copyright claim because we made the content. And if you fight us on it and you lose, then we're going to have your YouTube account deleted. Your, your YouTube account is going to be subject to deletion. I fought them anyway. And thankfully, I wound up winning that claim. But the point is, that's how they get people. They scare them into not even fighting. They say, if you fight us, we can delete your YouTube account. We can take away your entire livelihood. And that's how they scare people into submission. And that's because Gillette did not like the fact that there were a whole bunch of conservative commentators talking about how stupid that ad was. And so thankfully I was able to win that one. But I mean, it just, it does go to show you that there are people out there that don't like it when people talk about them in a negative light. And because of that, they do try to silence their voices because they're big and powerful and have a lot of influence and you're not. And when you're on these secondary mediums like YouTube, like Facebook, like Twitter, then that's something that you have to deal with. Facebook has censored me a couple times. I've talked about that on the show. Uh, one of the claims they actually did reverse and another claim that they didn't. They claimed that I was engaged in hate speech and all kinds of other crazy stuff that wasn't true. When it comes to YouTube, I'm convinced that YouTube is censoring my search results. If you don't believe me, when you get a chance... Go on YouTube, search for my name, Caleb Colquitt, because if you search for Tactics Radio, granted, you will get my channel. But if you search for Caleb Colquitt, that is a tag in every single one of my videos. You'll notice that you have to get to like page seven before you actually find one of my videos, even though they have more views than a lot of the videos that you're seeing get pinged ahead of mine. So I thought, well, maybe it's just because these videos are old. And so I actually filtered my search results to put it to the last couple of weeks. And you know what? They still had videos with one and two views ahead of one of mine that had over a thousand. And so it doesn't seem to me a coincidence, especially since I've had YouTube accounts in the past that talked about things that weren't about politics. And somehow I was able to find those videos right away. Somehow those videos didn't wind up behind a wall in the search engine. But when I'm behind a video of a kid talking into his phone that's like 12 seconds long and has no views because he's going to Cockwood County, Georgia. And so I'm using my name and the last name. His doesn't even have the first tag in it. Clearly something is happening there. Clearly I'm behind some kind of search engine wall. And so this isn't just bellyache or wine or whatever, but I'm saying that if they're censoring, they're already censoring voices that they don't approve of. And that's the problem that you're running into. And it's so sad. It is so sad because the great thing about the internet was always that it got rid of the gatekeepers. It got rid of the people that said, no, you're not allowed to be on our network. You're not allowed to be on our TV station. You're not allowed to be on our radio station. It got rid of those gatekeepers to where anybody could go on there and have their voice and, and have their story told. But now they're getting to the point to where they're trying to stop that. They're trying to end 
that relationship that you used to have between you and the viewer. They're trying to end that communication, and they're trying to filter it through their idea of what it ought to be. And so, in effect, they have become the new gatekeepers. The great thing about the internet was that it was this big, free, open frontier that anybody could go out and make their own little space in it. And now the gatekeepers are trying to keep people that they deem unworthy of that off. And it really is a shame. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime... I'm going to take a nap.